Look alive, haunters. You are entering a story about Geist, the Sin Eaters. Welcome to the Chroniclers of Darkness, a narrative horror podcast set in the RPG New World of Darkness. Due to adult language and the violent nature of the stories told, this podcast is rated M for Mature, and we strongly encourage listener discretion. Episode 1 Callbacks. It's almost 11 a.m. and my neck strains as my head slumps to the right. I feel that pinch in my shoulder and I breathe deep. The caramel macchiato in my thermos is masking the smell of the rum, but not the taste, not the burn. I want to blink hard to center myself. But the world tilts a little too hard. My tongue grinds against my molars like a cinder block, like I dabbed it with a napkin. Coworker turns the cubicle aisle, and one hand salutes with half his face blocked by his coffees for closers mug. Hold your breath, sit up straight, smile, and nod back. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Down, once again he's out of sight. Treading consciousness like water. Just have to float until lunch. Almost there. Fucking hate Wednesdays. Wednesdays are data entry AMs, moving blue leads into the yellow have-called column, then into the orange have-visited column, then the black column of sold. The colors make no sense. And the black column looks like a monolith, a definitive concrete sculpture in a graveyard that points upward. A kind of firm statement like an issue from an angel saying, You are here, and you are never permitted to leave. We put our fingers on the white squares beneath us. Tap, tap, tap. Copy, paste, copy, paste, forward, highlight, highlight. Complete from preset draft email that we planted yesterday. Update, save, and export. Thank God. Tell Michael about the 1130 who just pushed up the meeting. He wastes both our time by opening his mouth. And we have to lean across his desk to refresh and show him the email we just sent. His, his eyes, eyes flick to, to the, the screen, screen superficially. superficially while his gaze dives down our blouse. He likes our hair unwinding from the bun on top, the curly light tendrils tickling his ear. We make him like our hair. We grab his brain with our power and hold his gaze like a leather leash. He lets us go, and we rush to the bathroom. Locked in the stall, our hand recaptures our hair and ties it tight, straining the scalp. Not enough for pain. She has to earn that. She has to work for that. We squat in the stall in the heat, the haze, the dusty choke of the air conditioner of the air vent above us, and it baptizes us in sweat. We move our hand to our waist, then grip the fabric of our pants leg hard, and... No. <sighs> no. I fold my hands and close my eyes. I told you, never in the office. We're useless without a day job. Deep breath. I am in control. I'm dizzy. Always cold, sweating down my back on the verge of a blinding migraine. But, and this is a very big but surrounded by air quotes, I am alive. And I am so goddamn happy for it. My name is Carrie Nicholson. But everybody calls me Nix. You can too. I don't expect anyone to listen to these tapes. 
I know how badly the Tombstone King of Queens stands with the rest of the New York City for community. But this confession needs to be heard. That's what we do when we make the bargain. We promise that on our second time around. We will set things right. Nothing is settled correctly since my crew disbanded. <laughs> and I know no one else believes this, but it was entirely Leslie Sherman's doing and idea. The East River incident that happened two Halloweens ago was not our fault as a crew, but Leslie was one of our founding members, so we stepped up to stop him. He lied to all of us, as a community at large. So, if no one else is going to, I'm going to try and repair that damage. We stepped up, and we lost one of our own doing so. Disbanding hurt like ripping off a skin tag or catching an earring on a nail. Chandra has since left New York City to return to, of all places, New Orleans, where she claims racial tensions aren't any better but at least consistent. So Chandra and the drowned girl are off the radar. Pura is totally unaccounted for. Last I saw her was over a year ago when she grabbed a China bus up to Boston. <laughs> and I say grabbed a China bus because she walked up to it while it was parked and it drove away with her. <laughs> she got so powerful so fast. But I don't think she ever fought with her geist. I think she and the conductor are in total synergy. I, I just don't know on what. Word on the Twilight Network says she reached Salem, so... Uh, any update would be appreciated. Robbie Crutch is still nowhere to be found. He was at the center of the maelstrom during the East River incident when... he was cut down. When Leslie cut down Robbie, he didn't just strike his body. Leslie cut Robbie from his geist, like severing an umbilical cord. And when everything cleared up, we couldn't find anything. Robbie's body should have just been there. That would have made sense, but no body, nothing in twilight, no sign of spirit or even his geist, the general. <laughs> and I bent over backwards, taking out money to hire oracles or grave divers, and he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> I found this old tape recorder in his apartment when I uh, broke in to put it on the market. Fresh batteries... Uh, had to go on eBay to find the right kind of tape. I will, I swear, find Robbie and bring him to peace. It's two years this fall, and I still haven't burnt an effigy, and I don't plan to. I plan to find out, and I plan to lay everything to rest. But first I should probably vomit. I hate fakes. And I can say that because I'm a realtor, so I can spot one from 50 feet away. The worst thing is to fake hope. The worst thing to do to another person is string them along and tell them there's a carrot when you don't even have the courtesy to show them the fucking stick. Rosa Flores was my cat sitter's mother. Rosa Flores would send her daughter to my place with a basket of dry cookies and a handwritten thank you note. Every time. Rosa Flores was told there was hope. She was told falsely that the tumor was benign. She waited too long. Now her family sits in the front two rows in the Ortiz funeral home in the East Park of the Bronx. A minister gives a sermon that half of them don't understand as non-native English speakers. Most of them are her age, late fifties, restaurant workers. I take a seat in the back, some suspicious side glances. They probably think I'm her lawyer. And, and we, we wait. We, we watch and grow bored as their, their souls settle in despair. They, they weep together, together. They sink together. together. Our power is keyed by passions. We see, twist, Filter and control the emotions of the quick and the dead. 
and, and we, we grow, grow bored. bored. If, if we, we wanted, wanted to, to, we could reach our mind into theirs, theirs and, stir and stir them to song, stir them to joy, to, joy, to ravenous hunger, hunger, to frenzy and lust and... Will you shut up? Here, settle down. Have some rum. Eventually, I get up to the casket, and I see Rosa Flores, spirit floating above her own casket. <laughs> A dismal balloon tethered loosely by regret. It's not her fault. She was given false hope. When I speak to her directly, it takes her a minute. Her thin face twists as if in question. She must realize that she died. <laughs> a smile, a nod. She shrinks a little at this. Sweetheart, don't you worry about the house, I tell her. I'm going to move the contract to the state and away from the bank. Nobody's going to take your home away from your daughter. Promise. Rosa nods humbly, but then her eyeless skull lengthens in surprise. I think she sees my geist reaching down with his huge hand. The black bone daddy is not subtle, and he treats personal space the way a child treats a dog's nose reaching first suddenly without permission. Rosa, don't worry about him. Just talk to me, okay? I want to know who told you not to go to the doctor. Rosa's slow to respond. The funeral home director comes up, hoping to close the casket and move on. I politely ask him for one more minute. He says yes while already moving the casket. I ask the black bone daddy to knock over the vase of flowers behind us. He swipes too hard. The guest book flutters and topples to the floor. Candles flutter and fall to the carpet, hissing out as they touch the spilt water soaking into the shag carpet. The director hurries off to grab some paper towels. Rosa, look at me. Who told you not to go to the doctor? She looks at me like she's given up on talking. She must have spent the last few days trying to call out to her family, to the people in the ambulance, to the coroner. At least she knows I'm seeing her, talking to her. Rosa leans in and gives me a name and an address of a medium, a spirit speaker not too far from her home in the Bronx. After she gives me the name, she fades, dissolving like shadows under the pale yellow of sunrise. She transitions beyond twilight, and the black bone daddy absorbs the residual death energy. And we both feel it like a hand massage. We both feel drained and well rested. The self-proclaimed medium bastard gave Rose Flores false hope and fake medical advice. I'm gonna return it, receipt and all, and I'm gonna shove them both down his throat. This podcast is brought to you by Nirvana's Path, your one-stop app for relaxation. The world's tension is weighing you down, and tension starts with each breath you take. Don't swallow and process negativity. That's not wise. Download the app for Nirvana's Path today. Would you like a free sample? Who wouldn't? Join me by sitting straight up and placing your left open palm over your right shoulder. Breathe in. As you breathe in, pull your left hand to your left shoulder, now down your side to your hip. Now breathe out with clarity and purpose. During this clarity, trace a lowercase letter C with your left hand. Repeat six times. Imagine that symbol in your mind. Let that symbol cast a spell of relaxation over you. You're now on your path to a new journey of realization. Don't wait. Download Nirvana's path today and find enlightening in this world. This podcast is brought to you by Union National Securities, protecting you, your property, your loved ones, and your peace of mind all at once. Union National Securities is an easy-to-install home security system with motion detectors, infrared cameras, phosphorus nitrate tripwires, silver lace humidifiers, and portable spirit boxes. Call Union National Securities today for a free consultation from one of our security experts who will tell you why America isn't safe anymore. Union National Securities. Walls protect. 
You know how all takeout Chinese restaurants have those Formica countertops and photo displays of dishes they don't make? Like they were never built, but just manifested with 20 years worth of grease caked to the walls, the same orange soda in the fridge, the same breaded turds of chicken, the same glaze, the same tasteless rice, and the same paper containers. I feel that way with psychics who set up offices in small towns. Something's off about this place, though. There's a gang of kids across the street from where I'm parked. One of them's wearing a pair of high-end Air Jordans. Those shoes have a ghost tethered to them. Maybe they're an anchor. Maybe the living and the dead shared those shoes at one point. But something happens when they walk past the psychic shop. The ghost moves away, like a magnet of the same charge, turning its face away from the front door. You can find a lot of death in a city, especially around old buildings. This one looks old, but people seem to be avoiding it. I put my memento a shot glass on the far end of the dashboard. It slides back into my hand in one swift motion. A while back, I had to destroy one of my keystones, and I've spent much of last year putting a piece of myself and black bone daddy into something new. I decided without Robbie being around, I needed a weapon. It took time, but... I took apart a fan and replaced the fabric with a woman's funeral veil. The woman was twice a widow from a port city who lost both husbands to the sea. Hopefully it'll help me channel the cold wind manifestation when I need it. I need my guys to be aware, awake, but separate. I can't afford to have him fight for control of my body. So I I used the cigarette lighter in the dashboard to light a cigarette, which I swore I gave up the first time I died. After a puff, I roll down my sock and hover it just above the raw skin of my ankle. The panic and the cigarette are enough to excite him. Many nights they aren't. He's feeling merciful tonight. Okay, dollar store psychic. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. To my surprise, the shop is a single floor between two other apartment buildings. No second or third floor. Even greater surprise, the front door is open, and it's past nine at night. Soft white light leads me to a waist-high beaded curtain and a back room. An old brown woman, maybe Caribbean, maybe from Central America, sits at a small round table. Her palms press down until the tops of her fingers are white. Let me guess, I ask. You saw me coming. There's a frequent customer of yours named Rosa Flores. You lied to her about the tumor she carried in her belly and she died. So you're gonna shut down. A harsh wind rasps through the room, slamming the front door shut. The thin drapes are pressed against the ceiling. (laughs) Big deal, wind machine. I can do that. I'm not falling for it. I reach out my hand, directing the black bone daddy. And together we touch the old woman's mind to kindle regret, despair. She will feel as we want her. Nothing's there. There's no mind. But she doesn't register in my death sight. I should know immediately if she were dead. Brain dead, maybe? What's happening? Am I being set up? A glass explodes somewhere inside a cabinet, making it buckle. Somewhere nearby, I can hear the disturbance of a wind chime and a fluttering like wings. The would-be fortune teller lurches up in her chair and opens her mouth. I flick open my fan and pull up the call for both cold wind and passions. Can't let something else hook its fingers in my mind. But there's no attack. The fortune teller's body stays strained and erect, their mouth yanked open in a way that tears the thin skin of her lips. But I hear something else amid the glass and the wind and the electric flicker of the light bulb above me. Nix! Nix, is that you? Christ almighty, Robbie? It's me, it's Nix. Robbie, where are you? Why why don't I see you? I glance into twilight. 
nothing, just a bulge of blackness behind the fortune teller trying to shove too much ectoplasm through this tiny woman's throat. Robbie, pull back. You're going to hurt this woman. Pull back. Nix, I don't know where I am. You got to find the general. He'll know. Find him. I'm in pain, Nix. I'm in so much pain. Open the gate again, Nix. Monroe. Monroe in the cemetery. Don't even start that bullshit. You're the one always complaining about how fucking vague the dead are, so speak straight, damn it. The fortune teller scrapes their knuckles against the table until blood freely drips, and they start drawing a symbol on the table again and again. I reach out to my geist to try and strike out, close this body's connection, anything to stop the possession. But he's busy keeping our cold wind up. The wind whipping around us blocks a plate from crashing into my head. Then a glass tumbler. Then the pieces of that tumbler. Who the hell is throwing shit at me? Is it my geist or something else we can't see? The sound dies down. The fortune teller falls suddenly to the floor. Her skin is cold and clammy. Dead for days. Cardiac arrest. Shit. Who was she? There is a symbol in blood on the table. Freemason, maybe? I'll need a friend to check it out. I I can't hear Robbie's voice anymore. He said something about Monroe in the cemetery. Which cemetery? Is he a ghost now? Something stopping him from moving on? I need to stop putting my fingerprints on everything in this crime scene. I go out the back, make a long circle around the block back to my car, and I open the floodgates and let the black bone daddy feel with me. It's his payment for letting me use him, as opposed to the other way around. I invite him to feel my sadness, my anger, and, ironically, my hope. Chroniclers of Darkness is written and produced by Uncle Yo, with performances by Monica Blaze Levitt, original music by Jimmy Lin, logo by Jesse Pascal. Special thanks to Onyx Path Publishing for giving us a whole new world of darkness to haunt. Game on, include everyone, and remember that death is only the beginning.